Hey, it's me, Jen Blood. Uh, I've been wanting to do an update forever on uh, some of the gardens here, and I get overwhelmed, and I'm like, I should do a thing where I just do a tour of all of the gardens. But that's huge, because uh, there's a lot of gardens here. So uh, I thought instead I would just try to do a garden a day and start with the first garden, which, um, and I apologize for the traffic. There's traffic, and it's loud because we're right near the road. But uh, anyway, I thought I would try with the um, first one to do my pollinator garden, which I have just uh, I've been working on all summer. And this is the first uh, garden where I've kind of pulled out some plants and put in uh, native perennials that are highly beneficial to wildlife. And uh, so yeah, so let's take a look at what I have. So this is it. Um, this is a, <laughs> right away, I don't know what that is. Rhododendron, azalea, I'm not sure. I'll put a thing. Uh, this is garden phlox though, which I'm excited about. And it's uh, really lovely. And the bees and the butterflies and everything are pretty crazy about that. We have down below, we have uh, violets. We have some, uh, Creeping, what is it? Creeping bellflower right there that has snuck in there. And I've been trying to weed it out all summer, but uh, it gets in there and it's quite persistent. Uh, we have bee balm, we have evening primrose, we have milkweed, uh, foxglove, we have uh, over here. There's a couple of blue lobelia, which I'm really excited about. We have uh, bergamot. We have anise, an anise, anise. I think it's anise hyssop. Um, I'm probably slaughtering things, but that's what I'm calling it. And we have uh, New England aster and uh, more bee balm. And that's the uh, scarlet bee balm, which I'm excited about. A little water feature uh, it's not a water feature it's a you know it's a bird bath thing but it's um, I have a little I, have, I bought the water wiggler to try and uh, keep mosquito hatching down but I've been cleaning it pretty regularly as well so uh, we have more lungwort so much lungwort which is great because I've been, I need to figure out uh, the ground cover over here. But uh, the lungwort seems to do a really good job of that. And so does the, um, the violets do as well. So, but obviously right here, because these are new plantings, there's no real ground cover. So I'll work on that. Uh, and then we have, these are uh, great camas that are obviously no longer in bloom. They bloom pretty early in the season, um, but super pretty. And uh, more violet, more lungwort. Over here we've got um, mm, lilies of some kind, I think. Uh, I'm not totally sure what those are. I can't remember, but I'll put it. Uh, this is purple sneezeweed, which is another uh, native perennial. Uh, I got Penstemon digitalis, which I'm very excited about. Uh, I've got three of those. Uh, some Jacob's Ladder. We've got this hydrangea here. And down here is a uh, bunchberry, which I actually transplanted from another place in the yard where it hasn't been doing well. And I'm hoping really hoping that it will take off over here um doesn't look great right now but actually believe it or not looks better than it did in the other location so i'm hoping that we'll be able to keep it up here and then we've got the um more garden flocks right here and uh so yeah so that is this garden and it's yeah, everything is a work in progress right now, but the goal 
I have a, an idea in my head of what I want it all to be. And the goal certainly is to have multiple uh, native, uh, multiple wildlife gardens that are filled with native perennials that are really high value for wildlife, um, birds and bugs and all of that stuff. So that is what I've been working on most of the time.